Hello and good afternoon from the city of Lviv in western Ukraine. A Russian assault on a military airbase here in the west has brought the war closer to the border with Poland. The regional governor of Lviv says an airstrike at the compound located 15 miles from NATO territory killed 35 people and injured 57. It is an area that has so far avoided any Russian attacks. The city of Lviv has been providing a safe haven for fleeing refugees. Meanwhile, British intelligence suggests forces are advancing towards Ukraine's biggest port city, Odessa, where our team on the ground heard aid, air raid sirens early this morning. We'll hear from them in a moment. Let's take a look then at Russia's latest target. The missile strike hit the Yavoriv military range, which is 19 miles northwest of the city of Lviv. It's also just 15 miles from Ukraine's border with Poland. So what then is behind the Russian move to attack the West? General Sir Richard Barron's former commander of Joint Forces Command joins me live from the Sky News Centre. And this is significant, isn't it, uh, on, on multiple fronts? Yes, it is. So we're seeing the Russian military extend their campaign into the very west of Ukraine, really to do two things. One is to restrict the ability of the Ukrainian Air Force to operate freely, and the other is to try to intercept the flow of reinforcements and weapons from the west into eastern Ukraine. And certainly Russia said yesterday that they saw those supply routes as legitimate targets. Um, the problem is, not only can you not get that military defensive weapons in, there's a lot of people going out that way too, towards Poland, and what you don't want to do is lose confidence in either people leaving or humanitarian aid coming in. That's absolutely right. So I, I, I imagine the Ukrainian authorities are, are being very clear about this and will be moving the refugees who are heading west towards the European Union down one set of roads and doing everything they can to keep the movement of their military resupplies on other routes. Ukraine has the virtue of being a very big place. Yes, and absolutely, there are other nations, as you say, that could send humanitarian aid in and refugees could leave the country. So tell us about this facility, a huge facility, which has used, been, been used by foreign instructors for years. Yes, it's the International Peacekeeping and Security Centre. It's 150 square miles, so a very big <laughs> facility. And before the war started, it was used by a number of countries to send instructors to train the Ukrainian military. Those instructors left before the war started. <clears throat> Yes, uh, the Florida National Guard amongst them, uh, they were there in February, I understand, training Ukrainian soldiers how to use bunker busters. And the significance of this attack too, uh, 30 rockets, 30 cruise missiles, it's been suggested. So a really serious attack, presumably to take out the facility entirely. So it seemed to indicate a step up in the Russian ability to mount an attack from the air. 30 missiles in the space of an hour, uh, carefully coordinated to hit different points of this facility. It was um, quite a high level of proficiency, higher maybe than we've seen in other places. But at 150 square miles, 30 missiles is not going to put the entire facility out of operation, although it's clearly done a lot of damage and killed at least 35 people. And how concerned are you about the proximity to Poland, a NATO nation, uh, the border really very close? So I think we need to be absolutely clear that targets in Ukraine are part of this war underway between Russia and Ukraine. But even six inches over that border into a NATO country would risk escalating the war to between Russia and NATO, and Article 5 will apply. And I don't think anyone is in any doubt about that line.